That's the sound of a bobsled hurtling down an ice chute. Kurt Tomasevich was on that bobsled, flying down the hill at 80 miles per hour, when the sled tipped on its side. What happened? Uh, the driver just made a little bit of a mistake in that curve and had the pressure in the wrong spot. And came back up, though. Dr. Tomasevich was a member of the award-winning U.S. Olympic bobsled team. He came to the sport while working on his master's degree in electrical engineering at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. As an undergraduate, Kurt was a linebacker for the Huskers and continued to work out at the Memorial Stadium weight room. That's where he ran into Amanda Morley, a former Nebraska track athlete. When she was coming back to work out here, I asked her you know, what she was up to, why she was training so hard. She talked to me about what it was like being on the bobsled team and how she was recruited from the national uh, NCAA tournament to be on the, the women's bobsled team and described the athlete as being, you know, about, or the male athletes being about six foot, six one, 220 pounds, strong, fast, powerful, a little bit crazy. And I said, well, that's perfect. That sounds great for me. A bobsled crew needs strength, agility, and an appetite for racing down a winding ice track at high speed. That's the crazy part. Every time we go down in the bobsled track, you know, there's a, a high risk of injury. And I've probably was in probably two dozen crashes, I guess, in my 10 years of bobsledding. Kurt Tomasevich, small town boy, Husker football player, Olympic athlete, and now University of Nebraska Lincoln professor of engineering. How does research help build better athletes? And what motivates Kurt Tomasevich to meet goal after goal? That's this edition of Faculty 101. Okay, you should switch partners now. To be able to inspire young people. <laughs> Ace your finals. It's really rewarding. I love the students. Welcome to Faculty 101, life hacks and success stories from Nebraska faculty. Time for orientation. Who is Kurt Tomasevich? We had them step off a box onto a platform and jump up as high as they could, but... Uh... At his desk in the offices of the Nebraska Athletic Performance Laboratory, Dr. Tomasevich pulls up a file on his computer that illustrates how the facility works with athletes. Part you can see that an athlete that we had marked up downstairs in the lab. The stick figure on the screen is made of colorful lines and dots, a digital representation formed using 3D motion capture technology. The stick figure jumps off an invisible surface. Based on that force and the velocity that they jump, we can calculate the power. And then we can also look at their body position to see again if they're at risk of an injury, whether it's in their lower back or their knees. You know, we can look at from Dr. Tomasevich uses cutting edge research to help athletes work to their potential. His bobsled days are behind him, but he acts as an athlete representative to the U.S. Olympic Selection Committee. And he teaches. Leading a class full of students may be as challenging and fulfilling as jumping on a bobsled. For the most part, I like seeing you know, how the students evolved, and it's kind of cool to see how an idea clicks in a student's mind. You know, if they're you know, at a university studying engineering, they're a pretty bright mind to begin with. And so seeing them you know, take that to the to next step is, is usually pretty exciting. Up next, lab work a deep dive into research and creative activity. All right, so this is kind of the, the headquarters, I guess, of our lab where we do most of our testing and with talking about biomechanics. On a tour of the Nebraska Athletic Performance Lab, I learned there's way more to being an athlete than going to practice. The facility in Memorial Stadium has parts of a basketball court and a football field, a weight room, and lots of equipment. So obviously the facility is pretty big where an athlete can reach full speed if we're sprinting from one side of the facility all the way to the other. They can get in a 40 meter sprint if they needed to. Uh, we can do pro agility testing here on the, the red surface. It's a very fast surface, the old Astro turf that the Memorial Stadium used to have. Um, we can pull out the nets here and use them as batting cages or a golf net. Uh, soccer balls, you know, we can kick into that as well. So again, we can bring up any sport that we have here at the university. And, and test those athletes. 
A special treadmill measures endurance, and throughout the facility, force plates in the floor and mounted cameras provide data for a variety of purposes. Here we have a couple force plates that we use, um, measure athletes' uh, force output, but not just in the vertical direction. So they can run and cut, and we can measure their force in lateral directions too. Uh, in addition to that, we use these 3D motion capture cameras to, uh, to really analyze how an athlete moves. And the detail that we can capture is, is pretty small. And so we put all that together and we can put uh, a package together, I guess, then we can present that to a coach and say, you know, an athlete is being efficient or not efficient. They're prone to injury possibly and that sort of thing as well. So we can really uh, communicate with the coach uh, on how to make an athlete better. The biomechanics of an elite athlete is what drew Dr. Tomasevich to biological systems engineering for his doctoral studies. Initially, again, I wanted to come back and do something with engineering. And when I learned through biological systems engineering that you know we could kind of look at the human body from an engineer's perspective, and you can measure the force, power, output, and all of that through joints and uh, body segments and that type of thing, then again, I got pretty excited and I thought about how I could apply that to what I used to do as an athlete. And so, you know, when it come to, comes to almost any sport, it's all about how much force and power you can produce. And so measuring that and quantifying it and helping coaches make athletes better was what originally triggered me to, to coming back here and, and trying to study that. Data gathered in the performance lab demonstrates what's behind an athlete's powerful jump. And again, using the facilities we have downstairs with the 3D motion capture, camera and the, the force plates put together a, a package that you know demonstrated how an athlete can be powerful in the vertical jump, whether it's a drop jump or squat jump. Uh, the risk of injury that came along with it and you know talking about the stress on the lower back and drop jump stress on the, the knees, that sort of thing, uh, and the results were a little bit surprising I guess in, in a way how uh, incredible the human body can be when it jumps and how much force and strain and stress it can take uh, with a lot of weight on your back you can still perform at a pretty high rate. In an effort to be the best athletes continually search for the most effective training trends that will give them the edge over the competition. Strength and conditioning, nutrition, psychology have all played a role over the years. Dr. Tomasevich says Nebraska's unique performance lab facility provides the best training ground. This is the only facility that we know of that has everything all together here in, in one place. You know, you go to other universities and they may have access to some of the same testing facilities that we have here, but it's spread out throughout campus. We have it all here in-house, you know, funded by the athletic department, so our primary focus is the athletes. Ready for office hours? How did Dr. Tomasevich get here? Before he was a university professor, an Olympic athlete, a football player, Kurt Tomasevich was a small town kid from Shelby, Nebraska. In school, he was good at math and physics and football. I liked every kind of sport possible. In the, the neighborhood that I grew up in Shelby, we were always outside playing games. There was always a, some type of ball game going on. The shape of the ball was always different, I guess, but uh, we were always doing something, so pretty active. And our high school sports teams were pretty successful, so, you know, we really competitive as well. He earned an academic scholarship to study engineering at UNL, where he decided to walk on with the Huskers. That was, in many ways, kind of a dream come true. You know, I grew up wanting to play for the Huskers, but you know, wasn't offered a scholarship out of high school or anything. So, you know, getting the opportunity to try out for the team and make it that way, I think it made it uh, even more sweet. I guess when I did make the team, you know, spent a couple years on scout team and worked my way up the depth chart a little bit, but uh, you know, eventually, uh, definitely all worth it. The life of a student athlete is demanding and life-changing. Uh, I think being a student athlete really enhances your ability to, to focus and be a better student too. And by that I mean uh, 
I had a small window in the evenings when I had to do my homework. You know, I didn't have all day to, to push it off and procrastinate a little bit. And so I think, you know, having athletics forced me to be a better student because, again, I knew if I didn't get my work done at a certain time, it wasn't going to, uh, to get done. So it forced good habits. Uh, you know, students now have opportunities with tutoring and, uh, and mentoring and that sort of thing through the athletic department. Um, I mean, I think, you know, being accountable to your team also makes you a better student. As an Olympic athlete, Dr. Tomasevich competed for the first time in Italy in 2006. Yeah, I was pretty wide-eyed, you know, it was pretty incredible. The, the Olympics were in Italy. Uh, you know, my mom and, and brother and some other family members came and watched and it was pretty incredible to, to get to have that kind of, I guess, pride in addition to competing in a sport. You know, playing for the Huskers was awesome. You have, you know, all of Nebraska watching, but, you know, getting to wear a USA on your back is, you know, kind of takes it to another level. Over his bobsledding career, he collected 11 medals, including a gold at the Olympics in Canada in 2010. Dr. Tomasevich says his Nebraska education and small town upbringing played a role in his success. The example of when Shelby had a fundraiser for me and, you know, there's 690 people that lived in Shelby, but they <clears throat> raised about $25,000 in one day for me to be able to, to bobsled. And some of my bobsled teammates that are from cities of millions of people, you know, if they raise $5,000, they get excited. Again, it's, it's more that attitude, that mentality, just that atmosphere of a small town where the community comes together when there's a reason. And uh, whether that reason is, you know, a crazy bobsled kid or, you know, it has to do with, you know, a farmer, you know, in trouble with the floods or, or whatever it is, you know, there's always that community that comes together. Now it's time for a pop quiz. Random questions, life hacks, and wisdom for all of us. That's the music of the band 22 Days Short. Kurt Tomasevich plays bass, his friend sings. That's one of the hobbies that makes Dr. Tomasevich happier. We get to play small town bars and some other places here in the area every once in a while, maybe once every one or two months, I guess. So not very often, but uh, that's usually kind of my escape, um, kind of a, a healthy way to, to release some stress, I guess. What do you know now that you didn't know when you were in college? Uh, I, I've learned how to train smart and not necessarily how to train hard. Uh, when I was in college, you know, I was always every day, go as hard as you can with as much weight on the bar as I could, I guess. And uh, it took a little while to train, to learn how to train smart and pay attention to, you know, efficient movement and, you know, taking recovery days and that sort of thing in order to, to be a better athlete in the long run. Do you have a saying that guides you? Um, I think the closest to a saying that guides me, I guess, was a quote that I saw by Bear Bryant one time. And, uh, and let me think if I get this right here. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. And I think that's one that may describe me a little bit. I wasn't the biggest athlete on the football team or even on the bobsled team as well, but uh, I'd hope that my fire and desire inside kind of made up for that. And now, graduation day. Final thoughts from Kurt Tomasevich. Whether it's the football field or the bobsled track or the classroom, Dr. Tomasevich never holds back. Yeah, I, I think the, the word grit is not a pretty word. You know, it really describes that it's not going to be easy. It's not going to just come to you. You have to work hard to achieve something. But, you know, if you have that grit, and I think that glory means even more. He tells his students to be prepared for the future, set goals, but take advantage of what life offers. You know, some things I expected and I set goals and I thought this is what I'm going to do and I went out and, and achieved it. But yeah, some things just kind of fell into my lap and seemed pretty wild and crazy. Of course, the bobsled opportunity, I didn't plan on being a bobsledder even up until 22, 23 years old. It just was an opportunity and I went with it and became a 10-year career. And, uh, you know, things like that happen a lot. So, you know, one thing I tell my students a lot is, you know, it's good to have a plan, but be prepared because that plan will probably change and there's going to be a lot of things that uh, can alter your, your path. 
that's it for Faculty 101. In the show notes, I link to the website for the Nebraska Athletic Performance Laboratory. Faculty 101 is produced by the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I think like any true Nebraskan, I'm pretty optimistic, I guess. You know, having Coach Frost around is it's pretty exciting and that, uh, you know, for me especially kind of reminds me again of the the Osborne and Solich days a little bit and that kind of mentality. Um, I think it's pretty promising.